This is my lawn mower. Unfortunately, it lawn mowing. I was mowing a corner of my yard that I rarely ever mow, and uh, apparently there was a spike there that was used for like tying dogs down. I didn't put it there, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. Uh, but my engine went from running to not running instantly, and uh, now it has no compression. Fortunately, my Facebook friends somehow always have what I need, and so I have this. A very rusty chassis with a hopefully good Briggs and Stratton engine on it to put onto my mower. So today we're doing an engine swap. Introducing Lawnmower Super Legera. Yeah, that was pretty much as easy as it gets. You've got like three 13 mil bolts holding it down, and then one, I think that was like a, a 21 or a 17 holding the blade on, and uh, there you go. That is one Briggs that does not work. Uh oh. One Briggs that is leaking questionable fluids. Uh, so this is going to be slightly more interesting because this thing is a rust bucket. Look at this, the handle's completely rusted off. Like, there's hardly anything there. This is actually, uh, it was a self-propelled mower. It also had an electric uh, start. It doesn't anymore. The throttle hookup is exactly the same as mine, so that'll be nice. I have no idea if the bolt pattern is the same. Uh, hopefully this comes apart okay. One thing that worries me is the difference in deck height. This, the self-propulsion has this, there's this extra bump here for the pulley, for the self-propelled part, this doesn't have that. So my worry is I'll get this on there and like the blade will be too low and the aerodynamics of whatever happens in there isn't going to work quite right. But uh, let's see, quiet power, yeah. And I still have no idea if this thing even works. I've got to try and detangle, let's see here. Gotta get a pull cord out of there somehow. And then, uh, yeah, maybe I can mow my lawn at night. Or maybe not. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a forest back here. This is as far as I got. <laughs> and then we've got this mess. Look at this. Look at this disaster. Oh, so, yeah, needless to say, a little overdue for a mow. Hopefully, hopefully I can make that happen. And I didn't mention, this is a, uh, this is 123 cc right here. Um, see, 100, 132. Sorry, 132 cc overhead valve engine. This, this chungus over here is uh, 190. So it's a big block swap. We're making a big block push mower. Needs all the extra power for self propulsion, but uh, mowing is the only exercise I get anyway. So I'm not going to deprive myself of that. Let's see if I can make something happen with this uh, with this hoopty. That is an engine. Look at that, it's got a little bitty starter motor. That's so cute. It's got this plastic shield here that's kind of, uh, uh, I guess I'll have to cut that off because I can't get it off and I need to, well, I, I, I gotta get this off. I gotta get this collar off somehow. And let's see here, how long does this shaft look compared to the old one? That's like significantly longer. That could be a problem. I'm not sure. Hold up. Oh, that's unfortunate. I just uh, just snapped right on off there. Hmm. Oops.
Well, that is certainly an engine on a lawnmower. Unfortunately, it's only being held in by two or three bolts and the blade sticks down below the deck. So what I'm thinking of doing is installing some spacers to lift the engine up. So I'll have to go to Ace Hardware tomorrow and I can also rectify my, uh, my broken bolt situation, which reminds me. Ha ha. Hopefully I can get that out tomorrow and get it replaced. And then I can make some sort of a ridiculous spacer setup, probably just some little pipe sleeves on some longer uh, bolts just to lift the deck up like an inch. And that will fix my, uh, well, blade fitment. But now that this is actually mounted to something that has a working drawstring that I can test, I'm gonna throw some gas in there and see if this puppy even fires because I don't even know if this engine works or not. And I also don't know where my gas can is. There it is. Gas can with the ridiculous uh, California spout that I definitely can't do one-handed. <laughs> so I thought I'd check if there's spark, right? Because you know it's a Briggs. It should it should pretty much start no matter what. Uh, yeah, yeah, that might do it. And I, with how much that's able to rock back and forth. I don't want the uh, blade to impact anything. So the second it catches, I need to let loose of that emergency release. Uh, really just shouldn't be doing this. And I'll have the engine properly fixed down, but uh, what fun is that? Yeah, Huron's good. All right, fires right up. I guess that's it for tonight. Tomorrow, I'll get this thing mounted properly and uh, Reckon I'll go do some yard work. It is now the next day. I've got the AC going in here and I'm going to pop that engine right back off because now I have to actually mount it correctly and get that seized, uh, that, that broken off bolt out of there. So uh, time to undo about 50% of what I did yesterday. Got both my engines here, and I know that I need to go get these, but longer, but I don't know how much I need to space these out. So I've got the tape measure, uh, it's shy of four inches, and this is a little more shy of three inches. So an inch and a quarter spacer, and this will fit perfectly. Oh, it's done leaking fuel everywhere, that is. You guys ready to see something jank? Spacers. They're just nuts. Wow, that, that idea is nuts. Sorry. So my concern is that with the engine sitting on top of uh, stacks of large nuts, uh, I might have some issues with harmonics, but uh, if that happens, uh, my secondary plan is blocks of wood with holes in them as spacers. Honestly, I probably should just go that route, but hey, let's see what happens here. First thing I gotta do though is get, uh, get that guy out of there, and I'm hoping where is it? All this time, I still don't know where my own freaking tools are. I'm hoping that Mr. Uh, Vice Grips can get that out for me. So let's see, uh, let's see what happens here.
Well, that actually sucked a lot. I never got it extracted. I had to end up just drilling the hole out and re-tapping it in the process. I absolutely junked my tap. Uh, yeah, Harbor Freight taps, who'd have thunk? Amazing. Um, so, yeah, I guess now I'll go uh, throw this in the deck. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's actually a heck of a lot more sturdy than I expected, and it fires right up. So uh, there is absolutely no chance, uh, I, I spun it around with it upside down, that um, the blade's not going to hit anything. So uh, let's go see if this thing works. I, I, I have concerns about this big air gap up here. I have no idea what the science of a lawnmower deck is, so I don't know if like that's going to prevent it from ejecting grass properly, but I know how we can find out, and that's my incredibly neglected lawn. So let's cut off the AC and go have ourselves a look. There's a specific uh, like type of grass that goes right up next to that fence, and my last and the old engine would bog down every single time. And I also have this deck set way too low. It's struggling a little bit. You can see uh, my blade probably isn't having a great time, but. Yeah, it's invincible. I've created the invincible mower. Look at that, that's, that's job done. I can go inside and I can have a drink now. That's, that's it, look at that. Flawless lawn mowing job. <sighs> that's all everyone needs in life. That little 130 would straight up not make it through that, like at all, not a chance. So that's it, I've created the perfect mower. I might take that apart in future videos and see what exactly happened to it. But uh, until then, thanks for watching.